How are you doing today, Ohara? This morning, it's morning for you right now. I am doing, uh, it is morning for me. I'm doing f- great. <laughs> I'm really excited to talk about the chapter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I know for you, especially with, um, you don't do the chapter reviews anymore. Um, yeah. it's, got, it's like a completely different, completely different thing. Just reading the chapters. Uh, do you read it as soon yeah. as it as drops or do you like let it linger a little bit? Uh, how do you normally take care of chapters nowadays? Yeah, to be fair, like without the the pressure of having to do a review yeah. i literally just uh, i just wait and it's like during the weekend whenever i have a moment where i feel like oh now would be a chill moment to pull up the chapter and read it yeah like that's usually when i do it yeah i can imagine so, so yeah yeah i had a few weeks of where i did that and it was the best feeling just you know rolling over uh, and just reading the chapter really nice. yeah it's nice i don't have to get criticized like, for my uh, thoughts yeah. right away we have like a hammock here in, in the yard yeah so like sometimes i just like to like lie down there and pull up the chapter <laughs> that sounds like <laughs> read, perfect it's really to nice i'm not gonna lie to this. <laughs> that sounds great it's one of those chapters i was like okay i probably should talk to ohara and see his thoughts on this oh, one because no, yeah, it's I'm, a lot going on so. i'm very happy yeah no, and like even though even though to be fair yeah i i don't particularly like i think it's nice not having to talk about it every single week right but at the same time there are definitely like this is one of these chapters where i wish <laughs> Uh-huh. I was you, talking right, about it. Right, right. I mean, you still so, could. It's a good thing you, you got me on. Could. I still could. You I still, still could. could. And I, I think, you know, recently I feel like uh, with my videos, I've been more and more also addressing uh stuff from the manga more and more again right but, um, right yeah. right no right. i'm i'm excited to talk about it with you today i appreciate you uh joining me ohara i think uh, we're gonna have we're gonna have a great bro. time so um chapter 1033 shimotsuki kuzaburo um first do you remember the sbs where oda went through the whole spiel with kuzaburo going yeah. back to the i i do film. i actually was working on a on a video on on a on dragon oh. so and that's that's where that came up a little bit because you know how, how he stopped it uh, stopped at the uh, shimotsuka village yes. at some point yes. and then i think in the sbs it was also mentioned that he and, and koshiro i think had like some sort of relationship going on yes i think that was the same one right my thing is how do you feel i guess we'll get there i guess we'll get there but i'm, I'm mm. happy that you uh, remember it so we'll get there the cover story the cover art quest is it coincidence that we have tashigi um <laughs> and the color story when uh, uh we got uh kuina in the chapter or, or is just you know this coincidence just oda playing with us anything there i think it might not be coincidence in the sense that it's a zoro <laughs> chapter uh-huh uh-huh a zoro chapter <laughs> a sword chapter because every time i think about swords i think about that chapter with Tashigi talking about the blades. Yeah. You know, when Zoro, uh, he did that that test. Yeah, Tashigi's like a big part of like, or maybe not a big part, but she's definitely part of like that Zoro arc. Yes. Because she's a swordsman herself. Right. I wouldn't, I wouldn't really connect that to Kuina. Mm-hmm. I just think it's more like, oh, this is like a chapter about swords and flashback and Zoro. So Kuina, uh, so uh, Tashigi <laughs> might fit there. I don't know. I'm not a fan of the idea that Tashigi is alive or uh, that, that Kuina is alive and she's Tashigi or something like that. I would hate I feel that. Like that would require another yeah that would be another sabo basically yeah and i feel like and it's been too long and too much <laughs> happened it wouldn't yeah it would yeah. not feel the same it would not feel the same i, I don't think I'd no that much um maybe when it's when we first yeah. saw her if it had gotten resolved back then i'd be like all right cool cool all right we got we got it out of the way she looks just like kuina but i think oda's addressed yeah. that already right i believe that was addressed in sbs i do yeah. think so i do think that was addressed i mean even if it's true I, I feel like if it were true it would have to be revealed in like an art where Smoke and Tashigi actually have played a role. But Alabasta would have been. So, for example, yeah, Alabasta, yeah, or like, I mean, even. I mean, Punk Hazard would have been mm-hmm. interesting as well mm-hmm. because Zoro saves her there. But I feel like right now it would just be random. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Especially if she's not around. Yeah, it would be it would be super random. I thought that was interesting that Oda decided to have Tashigi in the, in, in this uh, cover art request, but also Oda oh, brings Smoker back. We miss him. We miss him. I, I don't know. We do. Smoke was one of my favorite characters pre time skip. And, you know, post time skip has had he's had a, a difficult time. So I'm hoping, you know, he comes back, probably a member of the SSG, a lot stronger and uh, is is relevant again because I think he was I think he is the one of the best characters in One Piece. Definitely one of the best Marines for sure. Yeah. 
No, I would agree. But he he hopefully is off training. Or something. I hope so. <laughs> I mean, based on what happened at Punk Hazard, he should he should be. Yeah. He should be. That's why yeah. I think he's going to be an SSG member, just because he's going to visit Vegapunk. All this has transpired. I expect Spoker to, to be relevant towards the end of the story. It makes too much sense for him not to be, you know what I'm saying, to sign up at that point to kind of also rid the world of the warlord system he's like oh yeah i'll i'll step up i'll do that for sure let's get to the chapter it starts off with zoro versus king right now it's not zoro versus king it's zoro versus enma king is just a bystander asking <laughs> is there trouble in paradise um <laughs> i guess thoughts on this 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 entire thing right now with zoro's fighting king enma is trying to I guess pull his hockey away from him. How do you feel about that? Yeah. In general, I think this this chapter we had so many chapters where people were like, Well, when is Zoro gonna fight King? Yeah. When is this gonna happen? Yeah. Conquest hockey. I feel like this chapter almost feels like someone fan drew. Fan made, <laughs> fan made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like <laughs> it's like chapter ten ten where a lot of things happen. It was like, yo, I want yeah. this to happen, I want this to happen. It's just it just kept going. It definitely yeah. kept going every single and time. And it just just happened. So I, I I mean this chapter is fantastic. I absolutely love it. I love Zoro. He's like my favorite character so i do like the sanji parts in here as well because i'm a really big fan of what's mm -hmm. happening with sanji right now as mm -hmm. well so that was a cool insertion there as well mm -hmm. but it's it's mostly a zoro chapter and oh, yeah. yeah 100 i don't know zoro it, like everything's great like i'm a big fan of king like we should definitely get into that a bit later on yes um, i do love the entire enma thing a lot i think that makes a lot of sense because it shows us until now it was always people were like oh maybe zoro is stronger than luffy because like he doesn't have to do anything he just like beats the people he's up against so he's struggling now, now. we actually see exactly we, we now now he's actually again for like since forever i feel like in a fight where he actually has to he step up and like improve while he's fighting right yeah it's been a while i, I don't think that's happened uh it feels oh, like times good for sure it hasn't maybe <laughs> um kaku right that was the yeah, last huh. time you felt like zora had to grow and even in that fight like ashura coming out but since then it's been either he's been hurt or he's been overwhelmed by someone he probably shouldn't beat at this point this is someone that he has to he has to win he has to defeat king king is showing a lot more personality right in comparison <laughs> to the beginning of the arc he's a bit of a troll right like when zoro yeah stabbed no, him yeah. and he's like ah a direct hit and then he just blows up um <laughs> i saw a meme where it's like they were they had him and pedro side by side and uh <laughs> It's like one can take it, one can't. But the thing is, right, with King... <laughs> That's brutal. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> uh, with King, though, I like how they, after, you know, he blew up, they transitioned right to the Sanji stuff. It has Queen call talking to Sanji, and judging from the surroundings, too, it looks like Sanji's winning this fight. It looks like Sanji's knocking Queen around, and Queen is just coming out of another hole. You know, we always talk about Kaido and Big Mom, about, like, who's strong or whatever. We all, and I think back to the scene in Whole Cake Island when Luffy said, who's gonna beat kaido and big mom is like you think you can beat that thing this scene reminded me of that where queen is like what he doesn't stand a chance against king and then it confirms that king is lunarian and that they were supposed to be eradicated i think the thing that uh, was most interesting to me when he talked about them being gods and also the environment the world threw at them hmm. what do you think about all that yeah i mean that's that's just like a great lore dump there yeah. isn't it yeah um i'm excited for it i mean i think i think it's really obvious that the lunarians are going to play a really big part in the void century yes. and the lost history and it, since they were considered gods and like the the peak kind of like at some point while they were around i feel like it would make sense that they also played a role with, like in regards to the ancient kingdom maybe yes uh, king does seem to have wings as do like the shandians who were also like connected to the so i feel like there's like something do you think they're like they're kind of sky people right must be oh yeah they have wings oh, and like most definitely most definitely when i think about everything we've been finding out about them living atop the red line um being gods themselves the environment the world threw at them i think about basically they were taken over and they were enslaved right where the the celestial dragons the people that live there now mm -hmm. they remove them and replace them and they enslave them and most of them got killed from the conditions they were in but they probably thrived mm. so long in those conditions they were like these people are incredible they're unstoppable one of my theories uh, is that king wears all that stuff because he is like branded as well he's probably yeah. branded and beaten no, that and makes burned. that makes absolute sense yeah, yeah. scarred scarred entire yeah. Face. Yeah. yeah so he's probably like um really beat up because i'm sure something as well when we remember when we saw akuma it was just like they were 
like uh, they were on Kuma, they were riding him, and I'm sure they probably were beating on Kuma. I think for the Lunarians, if you say that they're they can handle anything, I'm sure the Celestial yeah. Dragons, you know, probably had them fight each other, beat them, did all these out. different, yeah. yeah, test how durable are you. Of course, some of them died that way, <laughs> but then when they think about this, uh, the Lunarians also think about Kaido and how, how much he knows. Where for King. It said that, well, this was the Vivri card, I believe. It talked about how he followed Kaido because of his strength. Where for Kaido, uh, did King tell him anything about the Void Century? Did King tell him about Joy Boy? Did the Lunarians, do they have a connection to Sun God Nika? Yeah. Like all those things, think about when when we get this dump that Queen is throwing at us about like <laughs> them being gods and all the different stuff. How do you feel about that? Yeah, no, I would definitely agree with that. I like one thing I wanted to say earlier is like another possibility, like I think enslavement and like slowly eradicating them makes sense. But I feel the way Queen describes it, that they're basically impossible to kill, but then yes. they were eradicated anyways. It, yeah. it does, in my opinion, hint at something very extreme. So I'm like thinking ancient Genocide. weapons, like ancient yeah. weapon, yeah, but, but, like, yeah. Yeah, I like that. I mean, obviously genocide, but it it does it does sound like you need like you some to do crazy power. Yeah, yeah, you need some crazy power to like take down this tribe of unkillable <laughs> beings, yes. basically. Yes. So yes. so someone someone like no matter if it's like the celestial dragon as a whole or or Im Sama or whoever else, like someone did a really really good job <laughs> yes. with coming up with something to take them to, out. So I'm yeah, I'm curious. Exactly. So I'm curious about that. Do you think the fact that it's this transition to with, with Sanji being in the panel, it was it was hinting towards that? Because I know I'm not sure if you heard the theory about Sanji, Sanji and the Judge factor. Using, yeah, the lineage factor from the yeah. Lunarians. Um, yeah, to be fair, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of options with the Lunarians there. I mean, like Sanji is one thing. I've also seen people talk about Luffy oh. and like his Red Hawk. I just thought about something where like, remember Zoro has been saying that King hasn't been bleeding and that he's been taking all this damage and he's fine. Right. For Sanji, remember Sanji, like all his bones got broken and he just healed instantly healed. in regeneration. Mm -hmm. What if that's yeah. like a, a, a trait of the Lunarians? That's why that they might, could handle anything the world threw at them. That might be very possible i think yeah i mean i think yeah. there might also be like something connected to devil fruits we know that like king is burning and we don't have anyone else to reference it so maybe it's just that every every lunarian has fire powers but maybe they all have like different powers and like they're connected to devil fruits in some yeah. way yeah so that yeah, might also be, be a thing they definitely also what, what you said earlier like with uh, with kaido i think kaido and big mom they know quite a lot actually like They've i mean big mom knows yeah big mom knows that that king is a lunarian clearly she yes. wanted to like recruit <laughs> to collect him basically yes <laughs> and also we got to remember who they were following yes the person who's been erased essentially exactly. from the world i think somebody that's that dangerous that you'd rather erase him than to even acknowledge his existence i i would say oh, yeah. that rocks probably knew everything about the history of the world oh for sure yeah, you know. similar to dragon probably who probably also yes. is like the most right like Mm -hmm. he the yep. only the only way he can be more dangerous than kaido big mom to the world government is basically by knowing more or having more <laughs> than they yeah do. he has the knowledge that can ruin them yeah you know exactly and he's and, and the thing is for the big mom and kaido you know it's in a parallel universe where luffy is in, in luffy isn't in wano and big mom and kaido they just ally i think at that point you'd have to like even the reaction from the marines i thought was a bit underwhelming to the alliance it was it was because yeah. i wonder if they know how much they know like if do, does the world government know how much big mom and kaido know because at that point mm. if they ally they know as much as they, as they know and they're actively trying to take down the world government because that's what they want to do they should be equally as dangerous as dragon if not more so because that's what dragon is trying to do he's trying to take down the world government for big mom and kaido they're like yeah we want to take over the world mm. but garp essentially laughed it away which was like uh, yeah you know, you know i do so feel I, know. I mean there must be something about dragon where the government is confident enough that like even two yonko together they could kind of deal yeah. with that or or in a way that like even if they know stuff they they, they basically don't, know as much don't. As him. yeah i don't know like maybe the world government i don't know they're just throwing stuff out there maybe they have something like the the last poneglyph right the road poneglyph and they're like well you guys can try finding love tail but you won't get it without us <laughs> so right good luck. right but, dra but dragon and dragon got that maybe yeah. who knows yeah you know, yeah like no, dragon does is, seem to have some like maybe it's an ancient weapon or yeah i mean yeah dragon, something that like, the yonko how do you don't feel have about dragon now like has your opinion changed on dragon up to this point especially after the events of the reverie um so as i said i i actually have a, a video coming out on that so i share a lot of my thoughts there but okay to sum it up i think i think yeah dragon is is a really interesting 
in case because he comes across as very harsh but in the end we know that he's just as Luffy and Garp he's like this very kind person that maybe arguably even more than Luffy and Garp cares about the people around him like all of them have this thing going on where they basically care about their family their work family quote unquote more about yes. than their real family right Luffy's yes. like my crew is my family and Garp is like the marines are my family and Dragon is basically like the rev- like the entire world is my family sort of yes. I think yes yeah, there is there is something about him where becoming the most wanted man compared to, like we we're seeing the Yonko like Kaido and Big Mom fight right now and how ridiculous that is basically and like we saw Whitebeard fighting among these people Dragon is still by far the most wanted criminal in the world like I don't think Dragon is weak right I think he's definitely I mean I'm not sure like Yonko level who knows? We can't say because we don't know how strong he is. But he's definitely not weak, right? He's probably a very tough guy. But he's there must be something. Lineage. Yeah, you gotta yeah. give him the yeah this right. the benefit. But of I think because it's Garp and Luffy. Yeah, but I think like power enough doesn't. It's not sufficient to explain it's not just why strength. he's. No. Yeah. No. So there is no. something about him. So I'm I'm super excited to see what the revolutionaries actually have in hand. The obvious thing we think about is the ancient weapons right that dragon yeah. in some way knows what they are right because if he knows what they are then he knows you know yeah. how to possibly wield them in one piece so far the most dangerous thing to the world government has always been knowledge what you know yeah, um where they felt they had to eradicate O'Hara because they felt like okay you know too much and you could possibly know too much you are mm. a threat dragon yes. you know we always talk about how he looks like rocks right and then <laughs> you know um there are a bunch of conspiracy theories out there about who his dad really is that garp really adopted him all this blah 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 right. but you know i think out of everybody's history i'm probably the most curious about him like how did we get here i think for him shanks blackbeard i want to know how did we get here yeah to the also point I'm that throw kaido in there as well <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah definitely kaido as well definitely kaido yeah. because as we said he knows a lot more than we thought right yeah. he's knowledgeable and he has the requisite strength and it seems like now he's kind of trying to acquire more things to kind of make a move but dragon man how did you end <laughs> up on the opposite side of your father to the point that the world government they're acknowledging you as the most dangerous man in the world right you know so i i we need to know more no there is I, I think i'm not sure like some people might not like it but i think there's also going to be a lot more to lose Luffy's birth and like Luffy being the kid he is like I think yeah. I think I totally agree that I also love the underdog idea of Luffy being like a no one who becomes strong in Pirate King but it's not gonna be that it's not real <laughs> though it's like yeah I, I think the the underdog idea was something that we we had in our head initially right and I yeah. think slowly but surely that started to fade away because it's like okay his influence someone that you could somewhat say is a mentor was one of the world one a yonko or yonko yeah. of the seas gave him his hat entrusted his will to him his grandfather strongest the most popular the the, <laughs> the most recognizable marine in history his brother the son of the pirate king his other brother the right hand of the the revolutionary army leader mind you the revolutionary army leader is his father <laughs> um his <laughs> his uh sensei the right hand of the pirate king i think at this point can you say luffy's an underdog yeah i don't think so i mean no to be fair i, I do think i do think because i see people complaining that basically oh if luffy is the prophesized dude or whatever or if he has like i don't know or like with zoro asanji like they're both actually from like royal families and stuff like that yes i understand where people are coming from it would be like nice to see someone go from zero to hero kind of but at the same time they still all grinded their way there it's not like they were like it, it like we're not talking one punch man here where it's like oh i just woke up and was super strong like no luffy trained his entire life basically since he met shanks to become stronger and same for zoro and sanji like went through a lot so they all grinded their way and they i think the only difference is that they all have the ability to access powers that maybe other people don't have the, the ability to access right that's i think the only thing so i think for luffy though say for instance you find out because we kind of know that things were already somewhat predetermined based on what madam shirley said based on what yeah. roger said about the sovereigns what if like luffy was always this chosen kid and that say garp isn't his real father or grandfather mm. dragon isn't his real father and this kid was meant to be reared this way this is all part of the grand plan this kid was the chosen one right. would it change how you feel about anything because it wouldn't for me necessarily no i I'd don't think so 
Yeah. And and to be fair, arguably I'm a like this is this is not confirmed or anything, but I'm a very strong subscriber to the idea that Shanks put Luffy like purposefully put Luffy on that <laughs> on that path. I'm a very big fan Ooh. of the idea that Roger that Roger basically told his crew members to look for the next person he's waiting for. Yes. So you know how Crocus is at the entrance to the Grand Line and then Rayleigh is at the entrance to the New World and you have Shanks sailing around <laughs> the sea basically. Like the impression we get is he's just like fucking around with his with his crew but as soon as he gives luffy the straw hat he's back to the grand line doing yonko business right yeah so yeah, I, my my impression is more that they were all looking for the person that roger was waiting for and for whatever reason whether like i talked about that in my devil fruit video the other day like it might be that if devil fruits have like something to do with it it might be that that luffy ate the gomu gomu no mi and that's important connected to Roger in some way or form so that's why um Shanks chose Luffy or because Luffy simply is very similar to to Roger but yes. he decided to give him the hat that like Roger's hat and then like sacrifice his arm to motivate him to be like make sure that this kid becomes a pirate right and so also the words I would, he said yeah no so I think uh, 100% I think Garb knows that as well I think like Shanks literally chose Luffy and made sure that that man became a pirate and like had like he believes that he I think he believed right from the start that Luffy would be the man that roger was waiting for let me ask you this is any part of you do you believe that shanks could possibly be evil <laughs> I like the idea, but I honestly don't think so. Yeah, I don't see it either. Like, because I, and the thing is, it's such a popular yeah. thought that people think, oh, yeah. so Shanks is going to double cross. Shanks was the mastermind behind it all. It's difficult to see a path in which it all yeah. makes sense. I don't see it. I, 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 you I, know I, what? I can't even piece things together. Yeah, I don't think so because like Shanks was too influential in that sense. Except like the only way I could see it is if Luffy becoming Pirate King in some way or form would be a bad thing. Like if Luffy becoming Pirate Pirate King actually strengthens the world government in some way or form because he unlocks like if that were the case and he basically just used Luffy to like like that's the only way I could possibly see it but other than that it wouldn't make sense I think what I could personally see is that maybe a character like whoever could be a straw hat or like a close ally I could see someone actually turning out to be evil being like someone like whoa what we spend so much time with that character <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and they yeah, were working yeah. with Blackbeard the entire time, kind of like that. Mm, who could that? Uh, the only person I could think of that would be like a huge shock would be someone like Law, you know? Right. Like, I mean, it could be Law. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, with, with any of the straw hats, if any of the straw hats turned out Ooh. to be, be evil, that would be, that would be that crazy. Would be, that would be crazy. <laughs> like, I saw something that people were kind of <laughs> making fun of when uh, it's like somebody said, what if at the last chapter or one of the last chapters, is Zoro and Luffy, then Zoro, like, <laughs> he pulls out his sword and tells Luffy, I'm about to turn you in for your bounty or whatever. <laughs> like, what the hell? I'm going to be a rich man. <laughs> like, I'm gonna, like, can you imagine the end of the story? Zoro's trying to get Luffy's bounty. Yeah. Like, come on, Zoro's yeah. like, I got a real big mortgage. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I got to pay it off. I got to take care of it. Luffy, your bounty's gotten too high. I'm sorry. Um, but no, I think I think that would be a shocker. If any of the Straw Hats are evil or someone close to Straw Hats like Law turns out to be that way, then it'd be it'll be a shocker. Yeah. But I, I, I Honestly, do expect I'd like a it. crazy twist though. Yeah, I, expect I do. I would twist. like that. I want I want someone not to be who they who we thought they are. <laughs> it, bro, it I feel like it would break me, dog. It, like when I think about just the time I spent with these characters, the Straw Hats and building, and it's almost it's not as bad, but like it's almost like like Conjuro, right. right? Like they went through this entire journey mm. with the scabbers and all of a sudden it's like, yo, it was me. Yeah, exactly. You know? But on um, a much harder level it, with the straw. Right, so it can't it can't be Nico Robin, right? No. It can't be Robin. I don't think Zoro makes much sense or Sanji. I think if um, you think about it, maybe Bro like someone like Brooke. Brooke. Where we or, basically don't know what yeah. like yes, they like the story is that he was stuck there for eighty years. But, but we it could don't well, really we, Yeah, we don't, we don't really, really know. know. We don't yeah. really know. It's off of his word. Uh, for Chopper, we got verification for the most part. Nami, we got verification. Usopp, Frankie. For Brooke, it's kind of like, eh, we just going off of what you say. You say he's full of bull. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. We got to keep a, a close eye on Brooke going We got to keep... <laughs> we, let's jump back to the chapter i guess <laughs> um so we're at the point where now zoro is because after the queen part we go right back to zoro versus king and he gets off a lion song versus king king goes back what do you think about those faces oda has king making yo yeah i was just attacks. about to say can we talk yeah so <laughs> i kind of like about? that 
Because I do I, I feel do that kind of puts him like in a it kind of puts him in a in line with the other beast pirates. Does that make sense? Because they're all kind of like they're all pretty like they have their weird quirks about them. Right? They have their badass look, and then they have yes. like this one thing about them where you're that kind is, of that's like, super goofy, right? <laughs> like for Queen yeah. and how weird he is with his gadgets and stuff, and Jack. Yeah. I mean, he's a mammoth, you know. But <laughs> I think yeah. the king, he's no, been historic. I like that. Yeah, this stoic, calm individual dressed in black, just always looking cool. And when he does one of the most devastating attacks, yeah. he makes the weirdest face. And I'm sure he knows it. Oh, for <laughs> sure he like, knows. <laughs> and I think, but I think that's nice because it, it gives him like a lot more character. Like he is it's still, his personality obviously. Like yeah, I think he is still the most serious out of the all stars. And definitely, probably like, like Zoro is uh, Luffy's most reliable fighter. He is Kaido's most reliable fighter, just as Katakuri. Like, you know, first commander thing. So, yeah. But yeah, like, yeah. Uh, he still has that goofy thing <laughs> where he pulls his face. Yeah, back, I, no, so like, I do <laughs> like it. I do like it. It's, it, it feels like. It's, it's very One Piece. It's very Oda. Yeah. It's something that Oda likes to do. Even for all the serious characters, it's always something like, as cool as Doflamingo is and how much we love Doflamingo, he was like walking around and like... <laughs> oh yeah, with his like penguin. jacket. Yeah, you know, it's his it's, penguin it's, it's, walk. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like... There's always something that's just weird or quirky. I mean, <laughs> do you remember the, the first foods. scene where Doflamingo was introduced in the anime? Like the way he was walking there. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember when when they showed up at uh, Mary Joa. Yeah, he's just like <laughs> knees up, <laughs> knees bump, up, bump. like just it's like who is this dude? And you know what I'm saying? This is just like what Oda likes to yeah. do. It's always gonna be something weird. When we think of the Beast Pirates in general, how they operate and different things that they do, like how. What's his name? The dude that was fighting... I forget his name. That's fighting Frankie. He was flying. Oh, um, Sasa uh, Sasaki. Yeah, Sasaki. Sasaki, yeah. The hella... hella <laughs> <laughs> Helicoptersaurus. No, everything. Yeah. Even Kaido. Like, Kaido being super... He has, like, such a badass design, but, like, he's just wasted all the time, right? Oh, so. Wasted all the time, crying. It's always something different that Oda presents yeah. that you can't expect, right? It's a lot of times we read a story, and we're like, oh, we, we kind of saw that coming, right? Then a lot of times, yeah. probably more so, more often than not, we're like, I had no idea that it was possible. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think it's really fun no because Whole Cake Island, everything looks super stupid and quirky, but then behind it, everything is super it serious so dark. and dark. It was so dark. And then with the Beast Pirates, it's like everything looks really dark and badass, but <laughs> they're yeah, actually like all a really lot. <laughs> oh my god, it's so much dysfunction. I mean, that's what yeah. I like though. I think I I do like being wrong with One Piece. No, for sure. Right? Because it keeps things intriguing and keeps things interesting. I think if it was, and I want people to understand this, if you could accurately predict what was going to happen in one piece you would hate the story oh it would be yeah uh, you it would, would hate it it would not be fun to talk about the reason why we talk about one piece as much as we do and we enjoy it as much as we do is because we're wrong all the time right and yeah. we don't know a lot of stuff so for us we're always trying to speculate trying to figure out what what old is thinking what old is trying to do because it's bro literally whole cake island came out of nowhere an entire arc came <laughs> out of nowhere i'm like oh yeah we're from zo to what wait okay we got go. 100 chapters of <laughs> <Okay>. wow <laughs> right right and it, it's and it was that's uh, what you love about it, it. was fantastic art yeah i love whole the cake art. island is i think in the community the best time i've ever had because it no was, one knew what was going on yeah <laughs> nobody knows what was going on it was strong opinions on from everywhere right yeah. we, you had no idea you weren't sure how luffy was going to get out of stuff you had people that really loved katakuri yeah, people who were tired of big mom it was a lot it was so much going on it was a gym based stuff it was smoothie it was cracker whole cake island especially in hindsight going back in the sanji story the capone it is a really really good arc it's fun it's dark we find out so much like whole cake island was a really good time so in one piece things like king making this face and even him being a lunarian sanji's possible connection it all comes together in a way that you're like this like this has to be planned <laughs> <laughs> but if it is planned, this is no. insane. It's insane. No, I, think, I think Whole Cake Island definitely was planned. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's just... Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Even though some of Oda's best stuff came from just like 
on a whim. Random where stuff, was like, yeah. Yeah, with the supernova and Shank showing oh, yeah, up at the yeah. war. It's like, you know, like, yeah, we should probably spruce it up. A lot of these things, it works out. And that's why, going back to the title of the chapter, Shimotsuki Kuzaburo, there's an SBS where it talks about, somebody asked the question, if Wadawichi Monji was a person, what would it look like? And Oda literally drew. This old dude. <laughs> he drew a young Kuzaburo. If you look at it, it's Kuzaburo yeah. as a young man. It's the same hair. Yeah. It's just younger. So I'm like, did Oda just use that? and say, I'm just going to make him look like this? Or was that the plan all along and just use that? It's just, sometimes it's just so much detail. It's just like, all right, man, like, how are you doing this? This is crazy. But I guess- Very little with sleep, the, I think, is the answer. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. We, we, we've heard of Oda's sleeping schedule in the past. I'm sure he's gotten uh, better. Uh, hopefully he's gotten better with it because we know it used to be like three hours or something yeah, like that. Crazy. Um, And so that's why when the breaks happen, I'm like, okay, enjoy your break, take your break, take your time. Because I know one of the scariest times I remember recently was when I think it was like, oh, he has to take two weeks out of nowhere. It wasn't a schedule yeah. break. It was like two weeks. And this is when COVID was like, you know what I mean? I was like, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, okay. I think the yeah. same for Akutami, for Jujutsu Kaisen. Like, yes. Also, like suddenly yes. got sick for a month or yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. I, I heard about that. And, you know, yeah. it's a stressful job. It's a stressful profession. Oh, yeah. Yeah even especially when you make it to the top right to, to the upper echelon where it's like now you made it there now you gotta it's, it's a lot of pressure on you so i see people from time to time upset about the breaks upset about oda taking off bro you gotta understand like i'd rather oda take his time and we, we get you know the chapters that we're getting than to be dropping chapters every week and all of a sudden he's like two months he gotta be out because he's sick. just gotta appreciate one piece and appreciate oda but i guess back to the chapter we have zoro right now it seems like king is really in control because zoro's fighting against enma right he's trying to hone or to control enma he hit king with one of his strongest attacks king bounced right back again mm -hmm. this lunarian thing is getting crazy what do you think about zoro unable to block being unable to block king's attack but was able to block conquest of the sea for a couple seconds is it the nature of the attack being more of a yeah i think it's tactile or uh, i yeah, think yeah, yeah. i think i think the yonkel attack i think that was just yeah to brace yourself you had time to kind of you know, i argue. think it's a lot a lot of power and sorrow was just like strong enough to deflect that with his swords yeah. i think it's just a type of attack this looks like luffy's snake man attack kind of it's so fast yes it's really fast <laughs> i just i just think there's no time to properly dodge that in any way prep yeah. or brace yourself for it so you just gotta yeah. dodge so king is like like you said with personality coming back or older revealing his personality he's almost mocking zoro saying a sword no, he's, he's a troll by his own sure. sword. like he's trolling him <laughs> and you know in the midst of all that zoro's still showing that he cares about his swords where i think that's the next step because when we think about like for the black blades and stuff like that what is your theory on achieving a black blade? What do you yes. what do you think factors in there? I think it's really interesting because right now we have kind of two different approaches to swords. We have Mihawk's explanation, which okay. is basically, well, it doesn't really matter. It could be a kitchen knife. If you're a great swordsman, this can become a black blade, right? Like that's right. basically what Mihawk says. Mm -hmm. And then what we get from, from Wano with this chapter, but also before from Kotetsu, is basically that no, like you can, like it, a good sword makes a difference basically. Like what I think what they're suggesting here, like the idea is like, no, these, these swords aren't cursed. They just basically have powers that require their sword, like basically like devil fruits need to be masters that require their, their wielders to master them. And right, this is, this is what this chapter basically yeah. says, like all these blades that are said to be cursed it's not about curse curses it's about you, you just can control it. really yeah you can't control it you need to be really powerful to unleash the true potential of the blade yes so i think that's that's really interesting because it's two very different ideas so that makes me wonder for example for yoru for mihawk's blade <laughs> is mihawk just so strong that he turned this blade black or is Yoru also in some way or form specially forged and mm -hmm. Mihawk is just strong enough to wield it? That's that's what I'm wondering. The Black Bait thing, I think Oda's doing a fantastic job of keeping us in the dark. Yeah. Because we've gotten so much dialogue and I think we're still like right back where we started. So <laughs> like you said, the Mihawk's dialogue, like doesn't matter, just about you as a swordsman. Then we have Kuzaburo coming out and saying, well, you know, no swords are really cursed. You just have to wield it and bend it to your will. But then you have the hint from Gyukimaru where he, hinted to Zoro that he he said well he said he was selfish where he's almost saying like Zoro does not care about his sword's will right right so now it's like okay is it about you aligning your will with your blade is it about you just dominating your blade and bending it to your will or is mm -hmm. it about you growing as a swordsman or is maybe like, it's all seeing three? your sword as a partner yeah right I mean I 
I guess what is kind of implied, or it's not even implied, it's basically they're, they're straight out saying that these swords have a will of their own, right? There is a personality to each, to each sword, kind of, yeah. yeah. So I think we did learn new stuff. For example, I think the fact that there are basically no cursed swords I think that's a really big reveal because right, I think one right. of the one of the ideas was like, oh well, at some point Zoro's gonna pay for using these like a cursed blade or these something. cursed blades. But, but it also, what we now know, yeah. Sorry, keep going. I was thinking like with with devil fruits, right, and how they can be <laughs> awakened. Where we feel like you know, with the awakenings, with devil fruits, not necessarily that they're alive, but there are other layers. Oh, to actually. Them. I have, I mean, I can, I can try to summarize a video I did like a, a week ago, I think on Devil's yeah, Fruits. Please. I, I, I do think they might very well be alive. There is a, mm -hmm. there is a really, I, I kind of un unwrapped the theory a bit in that sense, mm -hmm. but it's really interesting when you look at people, basically cases where we have the same devil fruit eaten by two people. Yes. In a way, these people take on new personality traits. So for example, like the biggest thing, the thing is of course, Ace, when he eats the Mera Mera no Mi, he knows right away how to use Fire Fist, right? Yes. He says he doesn't care about Burgess, but Ace does. And then we have this scene where he says goodbye to Luffy, and Zoro literally says that, oh, traits of Ace that Sabo seems to take on. And the same goes for, for example, for Big Mom, who eats the same fruit as Mother Caramel. Well, she eats Mother Caramel, basically, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. right. Yeah, yeah. But, be but before that, she's like this sweet girl that like cares about, like she's basically just too strong for, yes. for the people around her, but she's really sweet, right? She's like a really cute, caring girl. And after she eats that fruit, she becomes basically the same she like starts calling herself big mom like mother caramel she basically like mother caramel used the orphans for her basically benefits she starts using her kids then we have the with khalifa once she starts like she's the super serious like uh badass cp9 <laughs> chick but yeah. once she eats the devil fruit she does like bubble sheep or something like some mm. <laughs> some, <laughs> some weird stuff right and then we have mm. obviously the two weapons we have funk freed like that sword and the gun on alabasta the dog yeah. who ate like it were weapons who ate devil fruits and then got a real personality like like frankie can can basically talk funk free into like turning back into a sword <laughs> so so the idea yes. is that maybe devil fruits in a way like they have like maybe the devil inside the fruits merge a bit with your soul and when you die they take a bit of your personality into themselves so, right so like some residual so it's like one for yeah, it's kind of like a bit inherited will so for example you know like uh, mr two and bartolomeo like they're basically two really really nice dudes yes but one of them wor works with the crocodile to overthrow an entire country <laughs> mm -hmm. while the other one is really sweet to luffy and the others but then really cruel to He's everyone else yeah yeah so and then we know and then we find out that like these two devil fruits were and how like they were uh, actually wielded by the kurozumi clan right like the two yes. old guys with Oro so i'm like that would make sense if like some part of person of your personality got stored in that devil fruit and got reincarnated with the next person who eats it kind of i don't hate that i do like that because my theory of devil fruits is that essentially in some ways i wonder how much of it is fate right it's mm. preordained that this devil fruit was always meant for you based off of how you are whereas mm. for Aokiji, was he always destined to get this fruit or did the fruit alter him in some way for doflamingo was he always meant to be this manipulative what yeah. about for luffy was he always meant to be this malleable of a personality <laughs> you know do you, it, want, it, do you want the the craziest part of the theory <laughs> is that one personally i've always hated the idea that roger actually ate the gomu gomu no mi had the I same food as, as well. luffy yes but if like luffy does start saying all these things that roger says after he eats the fruit like he eats the fruit and then when shanks leave his leaves he says he wants to he become king the same of the pirates thing. and then he gets the then he gets the straw hat right so i'm like well mm. what I think the idea was, what if well, Roger didn't have that fruit very likely when he like, was fighting Whitebeard and stuff, but what if that fruit was actually Joy Boy's fruit? He found that on Laugh Tail. He then ate that fruit, right? Mm -hmm. Basically inherited some of Joy Boy's will, then died. So basically no one knew he really ate that fruit and then Luffy ate it. And then that, that's why Shanks stole it from the Marines, right? Because like that fruit belonged to Roger or Joy Boy and like was carrying their, their will. <laughs> Wow, um, <laughs> I'm I'm trying to process how I'd feel about it. Right, where like, cause the way you explained it, okay, I could see that happening. Okay, it still feels 
weird if Roger had that devil fruit. I mean, the Joy Boy thing, it makes a lot of sense, right? I, it might, I mean, some... it might even just be Joy Boy, yeah, to be fair. Yeah, 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 I don't <laughs> and know. And I would but like I that be... more, honestly, than the, the, the Gomu Gomu no Mi having, like, some sort of, like, hidden ultimate power or something. Like, I wouldn't like that, honestly, because that would just be, like, Luffy suddenly gets, like, this out-of-nowhere power upgrade because, oh, it was the ultimate devil fruit all along. I prefer it if it was just connected to to a person and that's why it was important to shanks to get it i do think with luffy and you know these power-ups i feel like i'm at a place where i'm probably a lot more okay with whatever power-ups are to come mm. just because luffy and the straw hats like just in wano for instance they've been growing a lot in different ways now sanji's pretty much just like his brothers zoro has an amazing sword he has unlocked conquerors hockey now he has, he's unlocked advanced conquerors hockey <laughs> luffy unlocked future side to rio to advanced conquerors to coding yeah. and all this transpired in a matter of like an arc and a half right. it's a month or something in the <laughs> so you know if luffy's devil fruit that is a completely different thing though like if luffy's devil fruit is one of the devil fruits that can contest against emu or something like that but i think as the story progresses i'm more and more okay with like revelations like this because right it's building it's building towards yeah. the end and we know i think something that we've tried to avoid as viewers and as fans is the fact that the straw hats are just this regular crew by happenstance they all came together <laughs> And they're going to dominate the world just being regular people. Yeah. That's not the case. No, yeah. They're all special in one way or the other, right? Through affiliations, it's like go down the line of the Straw Hats and the people they've been connected to, right? It's just they're different and they're special people. And, yeah. you know, whether it was fate or this was destiny, they all came together and they will be the greatest crew ever. Just, yeah. the, you know, so in our heads, all we see is is that crew placing their, their, their feet on the barrel saying, yo, we're headed towards the Grand Line, right? We're going to find the one piece. But when you just zoom out a little bit and evaluate each of these people and their lineage and who they could be connected to, they're all incredible. And we've added Jinbei. We might add Yamato. Yeah. Right. It's 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 it's, it's literally a crew of just like one in a million individuals. Monsters. Like when we think of like, yeah. like monsters. <laughs> each of them are just special and they bring different things to the crew. I think one thing I, I like one caveat I'd give to that. I would agree that that no matter what power ups Oda throws it as now, like we're slowly approaching the end game, so I guess it, it's just what it is. Right. But I think there's still a way of doing things. So, for example, with Sanji, people hated the idea of him just getting handed this raid suit. Now he's actually destroyed it, and the the real power up he got was that the raid suit activated <laughs> his yeah. his yeah. real powers. I love that way more than him like starting to wear that. I don't know. Like I'm I was never the the biggest fan of the raid suit. So now Sanji is still Sanji. He's just like. <laughs> hard Listen, as hell <laughs> so I, I can live with that a lot better for example ohara the beginning not the beginning towards the end of whole cake island when, when it was like with the entirety of whole cake island <laughs> i argued with these guys with everybody like we argued back and forth me dritz matt through ty argued about this raid suit because collectively we all hated it because it did feel kind of cheap even though you understood why he had earned it based on everything he'd been through where this is something mm -hmm. that you know but deep down as a fan you wanted sanji to grow in different ways and not just be gifted with a suit even though yeah. through his trials and tribulations he earned that he is a germa right he is a vin smoke i prefer this way more <laughs> way more than the raid suit even though i was warming right. up to it like okay it's here yeah it, it's it here. Is what it is deal with it but yeah. this is so much better because, I mean, there's a part of me that feels like this should have happened in Whole Cake Island, where it's like, okay, he has to deal with the fact that he's transforming into his brothers and Judge is kind of manipulating him so that he can become one of them and it's altering his personality. You know, it would be like so many different things going on there at the same time where he's doing things. Mm. When he fought Luffy, it's kind of like because he wants to, but he doesn't really want to because he wants to save <laughs> Luffy. It'd be so much going on. And we're trying to kind of parse things together. Like, wait, is he doing it because he wants to or is he trying to save Luffy? Right. However, I understand Oda kind of slow walking this where it went from Sanji hating it to Sanji accepting it to him hating it again to now it's not even about the suit it's about him right it's gone from him just hating the suit to now okay now you're now you're literally a germa <laughs> what are you gonna do now Sanji okay yeah. so it's Sanji's a roller coaster he's going up and it's like okay cool then he goes back yeah. down 
But he's going in a fantastic direction, I think. Amazing. Amazing. I think, you know, out of all the Straw Hats, Sanji's character arc. Oh, it's the best. No, it's the best. Oh, man. In One Piece, yeah. It's one thing I want to say. We should keep this short because the Sanji debate is like a whole other thing. But one thing I feel. I feel like one misconception people have who didn't like the whole Kick Island, because like people, I think I think many people who disliked the Sanji development kind of had the impression like, oh, Sanji was badass and cool before the time skip. Then he got annoying and then he got like a, a whiny little bitch kind of like, and then so like, yes. great, why? But I think what people didn't understand is that Oda basically explained to us that Sanji always, like he always had super low self-confidence and self-value. Like he was always willing to sacrifice himself, never felt like he was like really, like he always wanted to t- to basically take the load of other people, but like n- never never really caring about himself and like not feeling he's worthy of anything. And then yes. he's even, like he's he's genuinely surprised that Luffy comes to Whole Kick Island, even though he's seen that like a thousand times that Luffy would come for Robin and for everyone, for, like for Usopp, right? So... <laughs> <laughs> he's he's surprised that they come for him which i think is the, like shows how little he thinks of himself and i think people underestimate that even the cool mr prince sanji before the time skip like that was someone who had a little to no self-confidence as well and like n- only now is sanji actually starting to like believe in himself and accept himself yes yes i i do think there's a lot of times where sanji he is even at the beginning where he was ready to throw his life away when we meet him it was like do you think Zeth twice. saved you did he twice think he actually saved you for you, to tr- <laughs> for you to kill yourself for him how does that make sense sanji he always feels indebted to people he feels indebted to seth for like saving him and raising him and to luffy for and, taking him in and in a way it's almost like how pedro was going about things where he feels like his value yeah. was you know through death where this is how i can re- show my like worth yeah. by sacrificing myself to show you know, it's 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 a weird way to think one thing i do like is that okay the first time it happened and luffy gave his great speech it didn't change him it altered him he thought about it and he understood it but people just don't change just like that of course there yeah. are situations where traumatic things can completely alter you forever but if you've been that way your entire life everything that sanji's been through just a speech isn't going to change your entire being right no, so yeah. i really like just how he's changed and he's altered a bit but as the story's gone on he's gone back to this just self-deprecating my value lies in death i have to repay them this is how i show my worth that's why he's always showing up saving other people and putting his body in danger but at the end of the day like as much as you value others people value you as well you know like how he went and he was getting his he was getting his ass beat and nico robin it's just those moments it shines so much because we've seen the low points for sanji right (laughs) where it's just like Oh my God, again, again, really? And then we have where we are yeah, now, it's a, where it's just Right, it's, it's a great contrast. Like if you think back to Enna's lobby, where basically he refused to fight Khalifa, but at the same time he refused to leave it to Nami because yes. Nami's a girl and like girls need to be protected, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, now it's... now he actually lets Robin save him. And you see like Robin, probably the happiest that you've ever seen her in the entire exactly. story. <laughs> exactly. We love it. We love it. It all came together. Okay, so now back to his nemesis. Yes. I saw people saying this is the best Zora chapter ever. I have to heavily disagree with that. We know mm. what the best Zora chapter is. Yeah. We know what the best It's Zora where he gets is. lost. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> Nothing happened with that. I do think... Like you said, it, it feels fan made, but this flashback with him and Kozaburo, him learning about swords and giving us some more insight on swords, it was definitely necessary and needed. But I think, in a way, this is Zoro finally digging a bit deeper into his into his sword's will yes. and what the sword wants. Because finally, he looked at Enma. It's like, okay, wait, he's, it's not just pulling out my hockey; it's it's yeah. testing me, right? So one thing I want to say. So first of all, I'm a sucker for flashbacks in One Piece in general. Mm-hmm. And if Mm -hmm. it's one of the straw hats, even more so, because, you know, like, it it kind of feels like now that we're going back to to the East Blue, kind of, in this flashback, and to Kizaro, it it ties in pre-time skip and post-time skip. I feel like these moments tie in these two parts so nicely. Yes. Where, like, after the time skip, it kind of felt like, well, we kind of left these old straw hats behind but whenever when yes. we get these moments it kind of ties these things together which i absolutely love learning more about zoro obviously great 10 out of 10 chapter for me the only thing i i'm a little bit salty about just a little bit it's not dramatic for me but could zoro not have remembered that maybe like a month yeah. earlier yeah <laughs> it's like why are you remembering that now 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. You would hope that this is something that he would uh, know or think about at some yeah. point with Enma being told to him by the by Kuzaburo, especially when he was teaching Momonosuke Snatch, right? Like, oh, where'd you learn that? Oh, somebody from the village. Hold on a second. You know, yeah, right? that would be the moment. But I, you know. I get it. I get why now is the time for you to show that. But what I do love is a realization of what Enma is doing and how as determined as Zoro yeah. is, he was hindering himself because he was just going. He was like, OK, if I give this sword too much of my hockey, I'm going to die. So yeah. I have to use it kind of intermittently for a slash. And I, you know, pull it back. Enma is basically testing him, saying, no, Trust show me, me what you got. Trust yeah. me. Give me all you have and I will reward you. And yeah. so. With that, he's finally trusting the blade, which we talked about the personality of the blade, right? And how it could be either the breath of all things or like cutting anything or dominating or, you know, you just being a swordsman. I think it's clear that the swords and the personalities, how you dominate the sword is going to vary. Because you ever seen like some anime, I guess Magi, for instance, where in some of the dungeons, it was like the person being courageous then the Jin was like oh i like you sometimes it was the person being knowledgeable then the Jin was like oh i like you sometimes it was the person just being evil then the Jin was like oh i like you so i think for instance shiryu and his blade where after he got his blade back mm -hmm. he instantly cut down those guys where it's like well that's what the blade wanted at the time the personality and how to dominate the blade is not one size fits all it's going to depend on the blade and depend on who you are so you have to figure out what that is by spending time with the blade so i think think for Enma, all these trials were necessary because now he's come to the conclusion, oh, this is yeah. what the blade is doing. It's testing me. So for him, I'm sure for Yoru, it was a different process. For mm. Ace, a Roger's blade or for a Whitebeard's blade, all these were different. It was different ways in which yeah. they came to understand the blade better. And then for Odin, how did he learn how to wield Enma? Right. You know what I mean? Um, and I think it was the I, same for even the other swords, right? Like as, as Zoro says yeah, in this chapter, shoot, he remembers yeah, all yeah. his three swords and even the, right. the Sandai Katetsu, right? Sandai, you know, yeah. That's cursed. Zoro was just strong enough at that point already to like normally wield it, right? Like he, yes. he threw it in the air and basically yeah. trusted the sword to not. He trusted the sword. He trusted the and sword. that was kind of the trial, right? Yeah. And then for Wado, it was him. It was a memento, right? Yeah. And in a way, Wado, it feels like it was destined for him because we all presume Zoro to be a Shimotsuki, right? Yeah. And then now with Ashura and him acquiring Enma, it all yeah. feels like part of a big, like a big plan. It all comes together. So the information we got in this chapter was fantastic. Man. Oh, it, yeah. it was just bringing so many things together. And I think as well, like you said, when we see those flashbacks, it reminds us that, yo, these are the same characters. Because, you know, post time skip, it's they haven't been together as much. We haven't spent so much time and like so much time on characterization. It's been about progression, Yonko, you know, becoming a Pirate King, all these different things. Right. The moments where we can stop and see these characters going back in their element and bringing it all together, it just feels really good. Oh, it does. It does. I 100% agree. Something as well. Towards the end of the chapter, King says to Zoro, so you've also got kingly ambitions. Yes. Oh, I wanted to ask you about this. Do you think, yeah. I mean, we we do, we do did already get the Conqueror's Hockey reveal, right? But do you feel Emma, like Emma can only be wielded with Conqueror's Hockey? Is, like, uh, is, is it just Zoro using this unconsciously because he's like letting his will go? or is it because he is trying to put everything into Enma and like actually accepting it that he has to use Conqueror's Haki even if it's not consciously to actually wield this I do think this is Zoro uninhibited where he's releasing everything because even the guys that were around him they got knocked out so in a way this is Zoro's first time in the manga that we've seen him knock out individuals right it's like the trust from Enma is unlocking all these different things that Zoro has I do think you can wield Enma probably without having Conqueror's Hockey, but if you do, it probably makes it easier. Maybe it's a situation based on the type of sword Enma is to the fact that Kuzabura said, that's my magnum op opus. It, yeah. it is, it's so powerful that if you hold it, you could probably faint. Maybe Conqueror's Hockey is the way you, not to wield it, but to unlock its true potential. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you have to have Conqueror's Hockey to dominate a blade like that or at least so have it respect have it, have it respect you. you yeah yeah i think to bring out the most out of enma zoro trusting in the blade and being a conqueror and having lofty ambitions i think that is something that enma respects because again maybe enma didn't have this these expectations before right mm. but 
his previous wielder was Odin. Yeah. And coming from that, if that's my owner, you got to at least match that. that. You yeah. got to measure up to that if you have any chance of doing anything with me. That's yeah. why Kinemon and all those, they had no chance because they couldn't measure up to the type of man Odin was. I think about it when Odin said, there's no one that's going to come along that can defeat Kaido in 20 years. So Odin knew that none of the scabbards could measure up to him. So I do think the swords, they have personalities. You get used to hockey as dominating or as strong as Odin. The next person got to measure up. Yeah, and so for Zoro, agree. he's he's finally understanding what Enma is and what Enma's trying to do. And we know Zoro is a swordsman. He definitely can measure up, but he has to believe it. And he has to trust in the blade. You know, that's difficult because mm. when he first got Enma, Enma immediately, Sucked right? Just, all just his sucked, <laughs> sucked, right? For the sword, that's what it knows. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It wasn't out of malice. That's just the personality. And of course, that's how it's been reared. So I love the fact that we found out, oh, the swords, they're not cursed. You just mm. got to be strong enough to wield this blade. And I, I absolutely love it, man. I love this chapter at the end as well with him talking about you know luffy uh, yeah luffy and him talking about kuina and has he even mentioned like kuina ever since then i don't think he did no like i don't remember a moment in which he's acknowledged that promise in this way where he references luffy and references his oldest friend reminding us of who zoro is and where he's come from and like we see he has three blades they're all coded in advanced Conqueror's Hockey. Do you think King's, King has Conqueror's Hockey as well? Probably, right? He must He has have. to, I think. He has yeah. to. Yeah. He has Hell to. Yeah. Because remember, I feel and like- he's so casual. Really he's so casual about it as well. <laughs> I feel only if you have it yourself, you can be that casual about Exa Conqueror's Hockey. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> like, oh, so you've also got kingly ambitions, right? Yeah. And I feel like with a name like King, you kind of got to have it, right? No, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You kind of got to have Conqueror's Hockey. And with I Kaido's agree. crew, we haven't seen anybody else use Conqueror's Hockey. Well, Yamato, right? Oh, yes. In regards to his faction, I don't think Queen has it. Jack hasn't shown it. I feel good about Alti in some way. I don't know why, but I just... That she has It Conqueror? wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me mm. if she does. But he needs somebody else on his crew to have Conqueror's. It's a numbers game. With him, the right hand makes a lot of sense to have Conqueror's. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think Kid and, uh, and Law have Conqueror's? Well, Kid was confirmed. Law... No. I feel like it's weird that he doesn't, but we've See, seen the no only thing why, I f yeah, the only thing I feel like why he might have mm -hmm. is because I like I feel like the pattern with awakening users is kind of like that it you, they, that it was mostly people who have conquerors hockey. Yes. I know it was like, like I mean Luffy hasn't awakened yet probably, but the Flamingo Katakuri, then you have uh, Kid. I was like, well, if Law also has conquerors, that might I guess strongly hint that you need kingly ambitions basically to to dominate the will of your devil fruit. So I'm curious about that. Yeah, I mean I would love if Law had it. I mean I'm always in a perpetual state of feeling sorry for Law because he doesn't have much to work with around him on the rooftop is so amazing right we have luffy we have zoro we have kid we have killer and we have law mm. he's by himself no one <laughs> next to him <laughs> to help him what he's carrying his crew man what i'm hoping for is that one of his or a couple of his crew members just have absolutely broken devil fruits as well right. to make it make sense if he has conquers hockey I would have liked for it to have been shown at some point in the story. I would say that it seems like for Conqueror's Hockey, Oda, you know, he's coy with it other than for the Straw Hats because Sengoku, you know, confirmed in the Vivid card, he has Conqueror's Hockey. Yeah. Bro, there's so many opportunities we could have seen it. Right. So many opportunities. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. so it's just, even for Kid, right? We ha He said that he stated that Kid had it. Well, Kaido said that, you know, it's just like Kid, but yeah, why hasn't yeah. Kid used it once? Not one time. You know, it's just I wonder, I wonder like, like for yeah. Kid, it might also be like, he might not be as proficient in it. Like just as Zoro, right? It might be more of yeah. a conscious thing. Yeah, it's so weird though, because especially for Kid and Law, because they went straight into the new world, right? So technically yeah. I would assume they have more experience than Luffy in them. But then you know, again, Luffy did have Rayleigh he had explicitly. He had a he had yeah. a hockey trainer for two years. Yeah, hockey <laughs> so. that's, what, that's what I'm saying. We cannot view Luffy as an underdog anymore. It's, no, yeah, he's, no. He's, 
He's yeah. had a path that's not been laid out yeah. for him, but it's 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 kind of cultivated his his foundation yeah. to the point that he is. I mean, he is scary. You had Kaido saying, how high can a ceiling go? <laughs> it's scary yeah. at this point. But I think for this chapter, one of the best chapters of Wano, I can't wait for 1034. Give me some of your final thoughts, Ohara. Okay, so like this chapter, definitely I would say 10 out of 10 easily. Easily. Um, I'm I'm so, I'm really, really excited genuinely to see. Like, I mean, we I think we all really are waiting for <laughs> Zoro himself because like Oda is really dancing around that. I feel like whenever we get the feeling that old Zoro might be from Wano, then Oda throws in, Oh yeah, it actually is the, the old guy from the village that's from Wano. But I, I think yeah. at this point it's it's almost like he looks like Ryuma, he looks like the former Daimyo. So Yes. I think we're all just waiting to get that flashback where we see that Zoro is actually from Wano as well. I don't know. We need it. I want this I want to get it. that soon. So what I think is interesting is because as you mentioned, I feel like Sanji is definitely further in his fight versus Queen than Zoro seems in his fight with his king. Yeah. But at the same time, it now that he might be be able to unlock Enma, it like the tides may turn quickly. And I do feel like one thing I'm curious about, what I wanted to ask you, do you think all the beast pirates, like the upper ones, do they have awakening? Like does does Kaido have an awakened form? Does this queen have an awakened uh, form? <laughs> yeah, because when we think of Zone Awakenings, we think yeah. of Impel down, right? With yeah. just like oh or or just chopper. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like they're really durable. But different we've seen Kaido's hybrid form already. Yeah. From mythical but then the, zones though, it could be you the know, awakened different. form kind of seems to be well, if we go off like what we know so far, the impel down ones and and chopper it seems to be like a shit but it also like I think appearance wise, it's it's still humanoid but with very yeah. like animal like features and i do not think we have seen that from any of the like all stars or kaido so far so the weird thing is that jack is already down we haven't seen any named attacks from him right i'm not um, sure yeah. because i feel i feel like maybe not all the all stars have awakening it's like similar how how katakuri was awakened but i don't think smoothie is or cracker was awakened necessarily yeah so yeah it, it, the thing is so weird though because i feel like in the story once you get to a certain caliber of fighter you know it's almost like uh you've seen bleach right yeah when you come across certain fighters you don't even have to ask if they have a ba bankai yeah like, you just no, know exactly. like they have a bankai um, and like and that's how kaido I feel about should be definitely commanders. in there right absolutely absolutely <laughs> kaido can i think kaido and all commanders you get to that uh, point, especially for how long they've been, like, it's been a long time, right? Yeah. They've been, it's been at least two decades that they've been, you know, fighting with Kaido. Or maybe not Jack, because he was eight <laughs> when all that was going down. <laughs> I feel like they should be awakened, you know? And if they have, if there's another form, I feel like it's, well, the thing is, we don't know this for sure. It seems like Jack is done. A huge missed opportunity. If but I mean, isn't that the same that. that happened with the Minotaurus thing in Impel Down that Luffy beat it? And then it was it just came back. back. Yeah. yeah. If Jack got back up and he went into this yeah. hybrid form, I would like that if yeah. Inarashi and Nekomushi had to come back together and fight together to take down this form. Personally, that's how I wanted Jack to be defeated with both of them. Of course, we saw it yeah. early, but then he got back up, right? So I don't know. I hope there's another <laughs> form that, that we can tap into, especially Same. for Kaido and King, oh, even sure. Queen, to make things more oh. interesting. You know? Also, another thing I find interesting about King is that he might very well be because it's he's if he's the last of his race, mm -hmm. like I feel like it kind of almost implies like he's been alive since the Void Century. For I a mean, long it, time. it's possible that maybe I don't know they had like always like a couple of people around yes. of Lunarians who were like passing, but that would be a lot of incest. I feel <laughs> over the century. It'd be a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> so so it almost makes it sound like like king has been around for forever basically it does which i think it's it, also interesting i wonder how much of this we're gonna find out like how far we're gonna get into the lunarians because if we do we get uh dangerously close to void century stuff oh yeah so oda might just do the same thing he did this chapter with that. queen and say yeah that's something you got to find out for yourself right? yeah um we're definitely gonna find out more information though yeah and it also opens up a lot of interesting questions about kaido who might actually have some actually more noble goal in mind than we all think because you would think 
that if the Lunarians were wiped out by the world government, mm -hmm. King like King's goal sh should be to take down the government. Take them down. Basically take revenge. So, yeah. So yeah. there must be a, a good reason why he decided to follow Kaido out of all people, I think. Personally, I would like to believe that it was just, it was about more than strength, right? And it could be cool if that was another reason why Kaido started working with Doflamingo. Doflamingo revealed his true goal and it was like, hey, I want to I wanna burn it all. Kaido's like, well, I want yeah. I want a huge war. And King's like, well, I, <laughs> I got to get back into Celestial Dragons. Maybe he secretly hated Doflamingo, right? Maybe they fought before and Doflamingo's like, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't, <laughs> I don't like these people either, you know? Um, which makes, which makes, you know, me feel a bit more sad that Dofi was never like a true part of Kaido's crew because he'd be so perfect. I do think there's more to that than just, hey, Kaido is strong. I just started following him just because of how well their, their goals seem to align. And I want to know just how vindictive King is because you wipe out my clan, then, you know, I'm going to feel some type of way unless... <laughs> it's like Itachi where he did it. It was like a way kind for of, him, kind of, yeah. you know, for him to survive. Where it's just like, hey, for me to survive and be the last one, I had to wipe out everybody else. So I'm intrigued and I'm curious to see how Oda goes about this. All right, Ohara, Good we've stuff, reached the man. end. I appreciate you joining me. These are always a great time. Thank you so much, man. It's, it, this is fun. Thanks so much for having me. It's always a pleasure being on. Ohara's channel will be in the description. Of course, Ohara will be in the title as well. If you enjoy this, make sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, go subscribe to Ohara, all that good stuff. And we'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya, see ya. I start doubting me, I felt lost, I rewrite